Okay, good evening everyone. You're all very welcome to our RNA Local Charter Champions webinar. My name is Rory Leonard. I'm one of the Development Club Support Officers with Gulf Ireland. Um, and then we also have my colleague Suzanne Logan, who is the Women and Girls Coordinator for Gulf Ireland. Suzanne's going to take you through the, um, the presentation that we have here this evening, um, the, 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 the slide set and a couple of little videos. Just a, a little bit of housekeeping to go through. Everyone's now on mute at the minute, so if you can keep yourself on mute throughout the session. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to put them into the chat function. Um, we'll try and deal with them at the end. And if anybody has any questions at the very end, we, we sort of cover them up then. Um, we'll also try and cover off anything that comes up this evening that we can't deal with in, a, in an FAQ document that it'll be circulated to everyone after um, after this evening's workshop. So thanks very much for joining us. And I'm going to hand you over to Suzanne. Hi, everyone. Yep, as Rory said, my name is Suzanne Logan. I'm the Women and Girls Coordinator for Gulf Ireland. Um, we're just going to get going. Uh, there will be a few people probably being at minute late, but that's fine. We are recording this tonight. Um, it will be available on the Club Hub under Women and uh, Women and Golf Coordinator and the page on the Club Hub. So just keep your eye out for that, but we will send a pre-recording off it to yourselves as well, along with an FAQ document on any questions that are asked this evening. So we'll get started. So we're just gonna go through a bit of the background first before we get going on the local charter champions information. So uh, the RNA began funding the women in golf position in Ireland in October 2017. Maria Dunn held the post for the first three years, mainly focusing on increasing participation through Get Into Golf for Women and the Golf for Girls for Life activities. The RNA launched the Women in Golf Charter in 2018. However, due to the structure of the legacy unions, there was an agreed delay in launching the charter out to clubs. Golf Ireland signed up to the Women in Golf Charter in 2020 and launched the Women in Golf Charter for Clubs in the same year. Level Par was designed as part of the transition period into Golf Ireland as a support to the Women in Golf Charter. Level Par 1.0 ran from 2018 to July 2021, and we have secured funding for the next two years to run Level Par 2.0. So we're just going to go through some of the level par key objectives and level par is very important because it goes hand in hand with the women in golf charter so that's why we're going through this this evening. So our key objectives for level par 1.0 was to strengthen the focus on gender balance and provide a united position for the golf industry in Ireland. To increase the number of women and girls playing and participating in golf. To implement and support measures targeted at increasing the leadership recruitment retention and progression of women at all levels of the sport, to set targets for participation, coaching, officiating, leadership and membership for women and girls, to develop an inclusive, welcoming and inspiring environment for women and girls within golf and to replicate the adoption of the charter and the programme actions at club level. So the first pillar in level power is leadership and governance. So within the initial landscape back in 2018, no golf club had signed the Women in Golf Charter. And in only 4% of golf clubs had a woman ever held the position of club chair, president, treasurer, or secretary. There was a total of five male full members to every one female full member. And in 54% of clubs, the role of the chair of management defaulted to the male captain. And golf was also being administered by two separate unions. So during Level Power 1.0, we delivered five vice captains workshops to over 250 participants. We developed resources for golf clubs in Golf Ireland with the support of industry experts. And these resources included Golf Ireland's Governance Guide for Clubs, the Governance Toolkit, the Level Power Toolkit, and the Women in Golf Charter Guide. And all of these documents can be located on our club hub on the website. We also developed videos to encourage females to put themselves forward to the regional executive committees and national board, and this was linked with our visibility pillar. Golf Ireland committed to the Women in Golf Charter and delivered a Level Par webinar series for legacy staff and volunteers covering the four pillars of Level Par and the Women in Sport policy. 182 clubs had then returned their Women in Golf Charter commitments and signing up to the Women in Golf Charter was a core condition for any funding that was allocated to clubs. Five female members of staff were provided the opportunity to take part in a female leadership program with seven members of staff receiving one-to-one -one executive coaching. So we're just gonna go through um, 
a wee video that was done by Stax Town Women for Women in Golf. And basically it just shows how the Women in Golf Charter has impacted Stax Town Golf Club really, really effectively. First Ladies Club actually didn't start till about 1983, uh, where 11 ladies joined, uh, mostly uh, Garda wives. And a lot of them came in having no knowledge of golf. They'd heard about golf, and their husbands played golf. Because it was for the members of the Garda Shikana, because they, they couldn't afford to join a civilian club. But the wages at that time were fairly poor. I was one myself. Basically, their husbands kind of gave them a few clubs and said, get out there now and just hit the ball. Like when I joined, I think there might have been six or eight women in the year 2000. And that would be all you'd get every year. So, Anne, can you briefly tell us what is the Women in Golf Charity? Yeah, it's basically a global movement that was launched by the RNA in 2018, um, with, I suppose, the, the concept being to try and make this change for women and girls, um, to try and encourage them to participate more in the sport, um, at various levels, uh, whether that be the playing of the game, whether it be going onto committees in their clubs, um, whether it's going for that management position in their organisation. You know, we're a relatively young club. We were only formed in 1976, so perhaps we didn't inherit some of the uh, practices that would be there for some of the older clubs that were formed 1900 years ago. And you know, also we were always a very social club. Um, so there was always good relationships between men and women in the club. So that was a good starter. And when, when did the club decide to adopt the Women in Golf Charter? It was uh, last year, 2019, we actually got an email from um, CGI inviting clubs to take part in it. And myself and the captain, Brendan, at the time, we had a look at the charter itself and thought it was something we'd be interested in. We felt that we were very much in the forefront of women in golf insofar as um, we had equal access to timesheets. Um, our junior members were allowed play in the ladies' competitions. We, we, uh, we tried to include all ladies of all ages. We really had very little to do because we were so far advanced as it was. Um, but obviously we wanted to go a step further by getting more lady members, by introducing new initiatives, a buddy system for new members, our Get Into Golf programme, which has grown oh, God's grown. sake. Well, I wouldn't come up myself to join a golf club, and, and I think a lot of the people who come through the programme feel the same. So it's a great way to get into golf, and, you know, we love it. There's no getting rid of us now. You know, the Get Into Golf came and we thought, why not? And this has boosted our numbers hugely. Like it's been a great success, as you know. Like in 2016, we had uh, 197 adult women in the club. That's now 251, which is a 40% increase. So I think that has worked well. I would say to any club out there who's thinking about doing it, you are probably doing 50 to 60% of what they're looking for. And it's that extra step that's needed just to, to push it. So this is just an infograph then of exactly everything that has been achieved uh, over the leadership and governance pillar from 2019. And I hope you enjoyed that video. I think it's it shows exactly what signing the charter can can achieve for a golf club because the, the retention and recruitment of women has been phenomenal. So well done to Stacks Town for that. So then our second pillar is active participation. And the initial landscape, we had the first increase in overall female membership in several years. However, there were no mixed competitions being promoted for juniors and the average number of girls per club was nine compared to 41 boys. 35% of clubs had no junior girls at all and the age bracket of 20 to 35 was representative of 0.1% in golf. 55 clubs had 30% or higher female membership and 82 clubs had less than 15% of their overall membership as female. So during Level Power 1.0, the number of female members, women and girls, increased by 2%. 100 clubs have run six golf sixes where boys and girls could be part of one team. Each team had to include 30% representation from the junior girls section. 
There were nine Golf Sixes regional finals with the national final held at Port Marnock Golf Club in October 2021. There were over 4,000 women participating in the Get Into Golf program and there was 30,000 euros was invested into the Level Par Girls Activity Grants, which was allocated to 100 clubs, resulting in over 2,000 girls receiving additional coaching in their club. 110 clubs ran the Golf for Girls for Life, Life initiatives in 2019 and 2020 and 10,000 women and girls took part in the Level Par Awareness activities all done in 2019. We developed a Get Into Golf guide for golf clubs focusing on female recruitment and retention. And we developed junior convener resources focusing on the girls recruitment and retention. And there were 200 junior conveners attend at workshops and webinars and the average number of girls per club increased to 13. And for anyone interested to know, the Get Into Golf guide is available on the club hub on the website. So this is just an infograph then to show exactly what has been achieved over 18 months from 2019 under active participation. So our third pillar is coaching and officiating and the initial landscape showed that we were already very, very close to 50-50 gender split with our rules officials. However, we only had 20 female PGI professionals across a workforce of 640. One female PGA level one volunteer who happened to be a member of staff and two, male fe two female coaches were involved in co coaching at regional and national level. So then under level par 1.0, we successfully worked with the RNA and the PGA to design and deliver the pilot activator program. Activators workshop content had been used across the other home unions and we three years funding for activator training was then provided by the RNA. And we now have 15 female activators deployed um, around Ireland. Nine females interested in a career in coaching attend a one day workshop and three have since gone on to join the PGA. And six female PGA professionals completed a mentoring program. And this is just the infograph to show everything that has been achieved from 2019 under coaching and officiating. So our final pillar then under level power is visibility. And the visibility pillar supports the objectives of the three active pillars by sharing the stories of women across the game. In Level Power 1.0, the focus was on social and digital spend. And this was the first time that the legacy union, the ILGU, had dedicated a communications budget. Throughout 2020 and the soft launch of Golf Ireland, a clear focus was given to ensuring 50-50 representation between men's and women's content on Golf Ireland owned platforms. And a key learning of Level Power 1.0 was the need for the reporting metrics in the communication space to benchmark and measure change. So our key plans then for 2022, and I can happily say we, we've got a lot of it done already, um, but we'll go through them now. So under leadership and governance, we launched a charter champion campaign and we have 10 Gulf Ireland charter champions, two at national level and eight at regional level. We hope to have 200 club charter champions at the end of this year, and I hope after this um, webinar we have a lot more. We also hosted one workshop for Gulf Ireland charter champions, and that was held in Carton House on the 28th of February. And we are due to host four regional workshops for club charter champions later in the year. We hope to engage with 150 clubs under webinars and education for leadership and governance. And we are due to host vice captains workshops in all four regions um, over September and October of this year. So keep your eye out for the registration links because they will be coming out over the summer for that. The RNA funded a foundation leadership program for Golf Ireland to run and we have 24 participants on that currently and uh, they're all female and they're women from volunteering backgrounds within golf. So they're either Golf Ireland volunteers, volunteers at club level or women that are working within the golf industry. And we have also linked up with a local university to do a case study report on the impact Golf Ireland has had on gender equality. So under active participation, we are hosting 18 girls development hubs around Ireland, the first of which kicked off in Blaine Row in Leinster um, at the start of June. So we've got another 17 to go this year and they're, they're being well supported already through the sign up links. So we're, we're really excited for those. Under Golf Sixes, 100 clubs are continuing to use the Golf Sixes in their clubs. Four regional Golf Sixes leagues are being ran, nine zonal Golf Sixes finals, four regional Golf Sixes finals, and one All-Ireland final. We're also in the process of creating a youth committee. We are hosting eight grassroots festivals, four of which were held over Easter in all four regions, and the other four will be held in October over Halloween. We also ran a golf network 
networking event in partnership with Jackie Hurley from RTA, and that saw 80 professional sportswomen from different, different sporting backgrounds coming together at Druid's Glen Resort and giving golf a go for the first time. And it was a great day. We did a scramble format and we had teams of four. One person in the group was either a PGA professional female or a high performance female. And uh, those women kept the rest of the group right. And I think all the women involved with that had a great day. I'm just gonna show a quick clip of International Women's Day just to show you how good a day it was. had rain, hail, sunshine's out now, but we've had, we've had great fun along the way. Oh, it's been brilliant. I'm a complete novice, so it's all, it's all new for me, but I've enjoyed it. It's been such great fun. I think there's a level of disappointment <laughs> when you mess up. But no, listen, it's great fun. We're all stronger together, I say. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, that was, that was a great wee day and we're hoping to possibly do something similar in the future. So under coaching and officiating then, um, we are hoping to create a female PGA networking group. Um, we're offering eight female PGA professionals one-to-one -one executive coaching. We're offering uh, four female PGA professionals the opportunity to work in shadow in coaching sessions and activities as part of the Golf Ireland Player Pathway. We currently don't have a target for officiating as we are close to the 50-50 gender split, but we are continuing to provide opportunities for those that do want to get involved. Under visibility, we have recruited eight media volunteers to ensure greater coverage of women in the amateur game. And a minimum of 30-30-40 balance was applied during that recruitment process. We continue to cover 50-50 coverage of the men's and women's stories and events on Golf Ireland owned platforms. And we also partnered up with an influencer via Instagram to launch a campaign um, under Get Into Golf. So we partnered up with Belle Azure. If anyone has Instagram, definitely check that out. Um, and she took on the Get Into Golf program at Coors Town Golf Club and really, really enjoyed the eight weeks. And I think she's probably going to sign up now to become a member. So that's that's great. Um, and we also will continue to support the For Everyone campaign and provide communication platforms for that campaign in Ireland. And finally, we established a research platform. So in autumn 2021, Golf Ireland engaged with Oledico, an Irish-based research agency offering live social media monitoring tools and online analysis services to hear and understand what the community are saying about women in golf online. The initial research covered the macro overview of May 2020 to July 2021 with quarterly reports thereafter and the findings so far included the most influential social platforms for Golf Ireland to proactively engage with, the widespread use of the term lady or ladies versus women's, the impact of male sports people and the impact of athletes having an active social presence and we will, we're working on benchmarking um, of the social content versus other Irish sports organisations and global golf organisations. So finally, we're getting to the part that you've all been here, you've all logged into what to find out a bit more about, which is the Women in Golf Charter. So currently, um, the people that are on this call are either golf clubs that have signed up and are well on their journey through the Golf Charter, some golf clubs have signed up and are just at the beginning and some golf clubs have logged in tonight just to find out a bit more information. So I'm just gonna take you back to the start of the charter journey and work our way through that. And I promise we'll not be on for too much longer because I know there's a lot of content that we've covered already. So getting started then, the first thing that golf clubs really should do is discuss the charter at management committee meetings, then go on to create a charter working group. We would recommend six to eight people on this group and obviously keeping that 30, 30, 40 gender representation on that wee group as well. Visiting the Golf Ireland Club Hub and reading all the material related to the charter and then contacting the development and club support officer in your area to arrange an initial meeting. 
So just in case anyone doesn't know what the Club Hub is, it's a new part of our website that we've recently introduced. And you will find the access for that along the top bar of the Golf Ireland website. So if you click into Club Hub, it will take you through anything from the Women in Golf Charter through WHS and also on the junior development. So there's a lot of content in there. But just to concentrate on the Women in Golf Charter, if you click onto that, you will come to this page and it's the Women in Golf Charter Explain page you're looking to access. And within this page, you will see the All-Ireland Charter Signatory. So every club that has currently signed up, you will find the link to register your local charter champions. You will find the Golf Ireland um, Charter Commitments and you will also find the Women in Golf Charter Guide. So the important documents that your club should really get to grips with are the Women in Golf Charter Guide, the Governance Guide and the Level Power Toolkit. So you've got your initial meeting all sorted now. There's a, there's a regional officer is coming to your club. So now you have to choose your club commitments. So by signing up to the charter, your club is pledging to achieve two bronze commitments, two silver commitments and two gold commitments. So under the bronze commitments, there are five options and we ask that you pick two. The first one being implementing better signage around the golf club, adopting an inclusive approach with female and family imagery displayed throughout the clubhouse and website providing volunteering opportunities for women and girls within our club, appointing a male and female club charter champion to share stories within your club and with Golf Ireland on a positive charter action within the club. Other priorities your club needs to address um, to be inclusive for females and families within our club. Under Silver then, you're wanting to address implementing and delivering recruitment initiatives, targeting women, girls and families addressing and implementing strategies to support female retention, implementing a membership pathway for women and girls to progress within our club structure, creating opportunities for women and girls to shadow and train with volunteers in specific areas of the club to enable them to take on these positions in the future, supporting national women and girls campaigns and addressing perception, recruitment and or retention, and providing opportunities for families to play together on a regular basis to allocate a portion of the weekend timesheet to families, i.e. one hour. So under gold, there's only two and there, there are big ones. So that's why the charter does take three years to complete. So under gold, you need to commit to ensuring full membership is available to both genders, ensuring equal access to timesheet and competitions is based on membership category, not on gender. So full mem members, male or female, have the same access to the timesheet regardless of gender. And lastly, achieving 30% female representation on the club management committee. So then upon selecting your club charter commitments and completing appendix two in the Women in Golf Charter Guide, clubs should then send this on to the regional development and club support officers. You will then receive a framed copy of your commitments to display in the clubhouse. So this is just an example on the side of the screen and this is actually Golf Ireland's charter commitments. You can find that on the website as well, just to have a, a read off. So this is just a screenshot then of the club hub um, and this is where you'll register your charter champions. You'll find this on the Women in Golf Charter page on the club hub and we ask that clubs nominate one male and one female champion. So then earlier in the year we went live with our charter champions local and national and the vision of the RNA Women in Golf Charter Champions nationally and regionally were a Golf Ireland RNA Women in Golf Charter Champion should be a strong advocate for gender equality have the time and passion to actively promote the Women in Golf Charter. The Golf Ireland RNA and Golf, and Golf Charter Champion will be an ambassador for the Women in Golf Charter, promote the Women in Golf Charter in their regions, provide updates to the relevant Golf Ireland staff member, providing feedback on any issues affecting the implementation of the Women in Golf Charter in clubs in their region, and become part of a Women in Golf Charter network and be open to sharing ideas, experiences, and practical advice. So if we just see along the top, our two national charter champions are Jane Joyce and John Parr. Then in Ulster, we have Bernie McQuaid and Richard Lee. In Leinster, we have Mary Grogan and Harry McAlinden. In Connacht, we have Una McDermott and Michael Evans. And in Munster, we have Marion Arnold and Juan Fitzgerald. So this is a video of two of our charter champions talking about the charter. And this was filmed at our meetup at the end of February this year. It's allowed us to create an initiative where golf clubs can sign up to 
create a level playing field for men and women and it really fits under our level power pillars and um, yeah so it, it's just it's it's really crucial for us as an organization to move forward with that currently we have 182 clubs have signed up to the charter and a lot more are coming through now in the coming months so we would hope to have over 200 by the end of the year we have to grow the game and I think it is very important for us to help to grow the game and when you see the, the joining of the GUI and ILGU and how that is working within Golf Ireland and the, the equality, the, ge the gender equality on the boards, regional executives kind of, and on boards and moving down and to move that down towards club level I think is, is, is very very important for the, for the growth of the game and for the retention of, of people within the game. The Charter is about golf and every club is coming from a different place and a different time and have different calls on their resources, um, be it the timesheet, be, um, be it committees, be it they're, they're maybe looking at their constitution. So um, there's a tool, it's a tool for us to use to help us get things where we need it to be. So yes, some clubs could take them a decade. Some clubs are there already and just looking for us to rubber stamp their progress. So no, absolutely, we have to look where we all are as clubs, all are as golfers, and just use the charter to, to get ourselves in a better position. And, and, and really, we need to grow the game, and, and it's a tool within that. The vast majority of clubs are male dominated. So to, to, to help make change, we have to have men making those changes and men being involved in making those changes. So I think it is very important for us, for me as a man to be involved. And I, that's why when I was asked would I be, become a uh, charter champion, I said yes, no problem. The Women in Golf Charter is to create that 50-50 split. So men are really, really crucial. And again, that just feeds into our Level Power campaign. And we want men and women to be on a you know, level playing field and to be full members in golf clubs and to you know, contribute equally to the sport. So you just saw the brief video there and you saw what the vision of our regional and national charter champions was. So the role has been in operation now since February 2022 and it cont continues to evolve as the months go on and the champions are crucial to the growth of the charter. Regionally, they've been working with the Women in Golf coordinator myself and the development staff to contact clubs and provide support where needed. They have also attended major tournaments to present clubs with their frame charter commitments and they meet with the Women in Golf co Coordinator every six to eight weeks to discuss the development of the charter and to provide ideas and set goals for the team to work towards. So the vision of the RNA local charter champions, which is majority of people on the call tonight. So the Women in Golf um, charter champion should be a strong advocate for gender equality in their club, have the time and passion to actively promote the Women in Golf charter within their club, the Women in Golf Charter Champion will ensure the club's framed Women in Golf Charter commitments are displayed in the clubhouse. They will assist and advise the club's management committee to incorporate the charter in any policies or planning documentation. They will provide updates to the relevant Golf Ireland staff member, providing feedback on any issues affecting the implementation of the charter in their club and become part of the Women in Golf Charter Network and be open to sharing ideas, experiences and practical advice. And Golf Ireland will provide the Women in Golf Charter Champions with free information, advice, practical support and resources. We will invite you to webinars, workshops and networking sessions and updates from the RNA and Golf Ireland on any updates to the Charter. So currently these are the clubs in Ireland that have signed up to have their Charter Champions in place. So we would really hope that by the end of the year, we will have close to the 191 clubs that have actually completed the charter. And um, it would be great to see, and it would just create a new network and session um, of people that we can um, discuss the charter with. So key information for charter champions then, clubs who have signed up to the charter or intend on signing up are advised to create a working group to discuss and encourage implementation of the charter at club level. And we recommend that the local charter champions are part of these working groups. Golf Ireland advised that the local charter champion should serve no longer than three years in their role. However, terms of office are really for the club to decide. Clubs should also then nominate one male and female charter champion per club. So we are due to host 
uh, regional workshops in September, October time. So please keep your eye out for these. And um, it would be really important that if you have signed the charter, get your charter champions registered because they will be the first point of contact for these workshops. I will, I'll be the one organizing them and I'll send out the emails regarding the locations and dates and stuff. So it'd be important that you're up to speed with that. And we're hoping to host regional networking days as well. So finally, then, just in case anyone isn't aware of who your development and club support officers are or who the head of development is, the head of development for Golf Ireland is Vincent Foley and Vincent's email address is there. Um, the Women in Golf Coordinator is myself, Suzanne Logan, and my email address is there. Please feel free to contact me with any queries. The Development and Club Support Officers then, for Ulster, it's Rory Leonard. For North Leinster, we have Maria Dunn. For South Leinster, we have Neil Kilgallen. In Munster, we have Jennifer Hickey, and in Connacht, we have Justin O'Byrne. So whenever you're thinking about signing the charter or you want a, a meeting, you contact your Club Support and Development Officers. Thank you so much for attending and um, if you have put any questions into the chat box, Rory will be able to read them out and we can have a bit of a discussion about that. Okay, thank you Suzanne. There, there hasn't been anything that's appeared okay. in the chat just yet, so if, no if anyone does have any particular questions now please feel free to, to either or type them in or if anyone wants to sort of raise their hand um, we, we can certainly deal with anything that anybody has yeah. or as Suzanne says a lot of the contact details are there so if anybody has anything they want to follow up individually with Suzanne or any of the development team please feel free to do so um, the, the, this evening's workshop is being recorded and, and what we'll do is we'll follow up by sending a link to where you can view that recording and a pdf of the slides that we've gone through this evening so that's a, a good resource that can be shared within your club um, so if anybody has anything particularly that they want to ask us now, please fire away. If you also want to maybe do it, you know, at a later date, if you can't think of anything, we will be putting a uh, wee email out to you as all, and there'll be an FAQ drop box where you can input any questions that you may want answered at a later time. So there's no pressure. <laughs> Yeah, there's Suzanne. There, there's there's one question that has come into the chat, and it's something yeah. we're actually looking at the minute. Is there a formal audit process by Golf Ireland of clubs' commitments and and that they have documented? Yeah, so we're basically working on that at the minute. So whenever clubs sign up to the charter, they're picking their two bronze, two silver, and two gold commitments. We do have gold certificates that we do really desperately want to award clubs whenever they reach that level, and um, there is a process. Um, for clubs to go through to apply for the gold certs so that will be basically a form where they input what they have committed to under gold and then explain how they have achieved that okay thank you no problem oh Laura just same one what about the term lady captain um I think that's just directly gone to me Rory so it has um so yeah, the term lady captain, a lot of golf clubs have um, dropped the, the word lady and have just gone to having two captains. Um, the level power toolkit will touch briefly on terminology, but we can definitely get a bit more information out to you at a later date. We don't currently have that at the moment, but um, a lot of clubs have decided to drop the term lady and possibly move to women's captain instead. Give you a couple more minutes and then if there's no yeah, other questions gonna say, so. if anyone if anyone has anything else please fire, fire it in now and, and uh, otherwise anything else that you want to you don't want to ask in this platform i want to send in individually please send it by email to suzanne or or your relevant development officer um on, on, on that note i think um we, we wrap things for this evening now so Perfect. thank you thank you very much for your attendance this evening and thank you suzanne for the presentation no um, as i mentioned we, we'll send out uh, a copy of the slides that were used and, and a copy of the recording which can easily be reshared with others in your club so thank you very much and good night thank you so much guys bye thank you thank you very much no problem thanks Thank you.